Hello everyone and welcome to the 21st week of this 2023-2024 school year. Welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Marielle Sanchez and I'm a fourth grade teacher in South Florida. I'm coming to you from Monday, January 22nd, 2024, and it is the end of our day, um, way past the end of that day. But I wanted to let you know what we ended up doing today, along with some updates on another literacy game that I ended up creating for another classroom that's going to be doing one of the activities for Literacy Night, which is in two days. And... Before I get to that, my students this morning, my block one, my advanced learners, they started the morning by making sure that they were making progress to the introduction to their GM Foods argumentative essay. After they had time to do that, of course, after a fire drill that we also had, we went ahead and introduced a new unit, which is Wonders Unit 4, Weeks 1 and 2. This is the sheet that I created for students to reflect on each component when we introduce a lesson or a unit. So I have the essential question here, why do we need government? And then we watched the opener video. After students watched it, they went ahead and wrote down the reflection on that video. Then we read the study blast and they did the same thing, write the reflections. And then I read them the read aloud, which is speaking out against child labor, which was a very interesting article. Students reflected on that as well. Another thing that we ended up doing in both classes was going over expository writing. Since we just near yeah, trying to finish our argumentative essay, we wanna go ahead and make sure the students understand the difference between argumentative and expository writing. And as well as going over the prompt that we are working with in the expository essay. And we started writing notes for my block one on the board and I left them up because I'm gonna review it with my block two tomorrow morning. So let me just show you that. So we found out from the analyzing the prompt that the keyword is expository. So of course our purpose becomes to explain. And then our topic is how invasive species are causing problems. So our audience is an academic audience. So it could be a teacher, anyone in the academia. Purpose is connected to our keyword, which is to explain. And the task is connected to the topic, but we write it in the form of a question. How are invasive species causing problems? I also made sure the students understood that in an expository essay, they may feel like they should summarize the passages. I told them, no, do not do that. The highest score you can get if you're only summarizing the passages is a one or two, which is not proficient. You have to address the task and address the prompt. So let me go ahead and show you that prompt. So this is the prompt the district provided for us. So as you can see, write an expository essay about how invasive species are causing problems. And then what we ended up doing is I kind of gave them an overview of the sources that they're going to be reading. We haven't read them yet. Tomorrow we will be reading source one and two with my block one and source one with my block two. So this one is from pet to threat. And then the second source is sick pet, sick people. Talk about how pets can get illnesses or diseases and that disease can jump from an animal to a human. Uh, here they're using the example of monkeypox. And then we have the third source, alien invasion, which talks about three invasive species, including the fire ants, the nutria, and the lionfish. I also went ahead and reviewed with my block one students the student-friendly scoring rubric for expository essay writing. So we went over this. And I also compared it to our student-friendly rubric for argumentative essay writing so that they know the difference between the two. This is a passage for their homework. And I will review more about the homework later. Now, to show you one thing that I was doing with each part of the introduction to the unit, since I'm going back to that, to help my ELL students write as much as they could in English, their reflection and their thoughts about what we were being introduced to, I went ahead and wrote a word bank on the board after each time. So after the opener video, 
I wrote word bank on the board. After the study blast, I wrote words on the board. And then the words that I'm going to show you are the last set of words that I wrote on the board that are connected to the listening comprehension. So I went ahead and I wrote on the board different words that the students should be using in their reflections. Of Obviously, they don't need to use all of these, but they can pick and choose which of these words to include in the sentences that they want to write as their reflection. Another thing that helped me with my ELO group was obviously using the district PowerPoint on writing. We didn't watch the video today because we didn't have time, so we'll watch it tomorrow. But we did go over expository writing, what is a prompt, and looking at the prompt that we're currently working on so that students have an understanding of what they're going to be writing about. And that's pretty much the gist of what we did today, Monday. In a few short seconds, I'll see you for Tuesday. Hello, everyone. It is the end of the day Tuesday, finished with my Minecraft club, and just wanted to give you a rundown of today. So I started this morning with my ELO group, which is my block two. And as soon as they came in, they used their computers to get some Imagine Learning minutes in, along with iReady reading minutes. So I want to say that most of the class got halfway through their requirements for the week. So little by little, we'll continue to work on that. And then afterwards, we went ahead and started reading our shared read, which is a world without rules. This is the shared read right here. Again, it goes with the essential question of why we need government. And it is a great narrative nonfiction that uses the second person point of view to put us right into the scenario. So the students and I read the book, or read the story, I should say, and we use this reciprocal teaching graphic organizer that I put together. Both classes first went ahead and did their background knowledge and everything they already knew about how the government helps us. They wrote their prediction, and I did clarify these three words with my block two, but not my block one, which is my advanced class. So we'll get to finish that tomorrow. With my ELL students, they were asking me how to write different phrases and words in English so that they could use it for both their background knowledge and their predictions. So I did make sure that I put that on the board for them. As for my block two or my block one, I should say my homeroom when I, they were with me after lunch, we started by making sure they had some more time working on their argumentative essay on GM foods and if they're beneficial or not. For that lesson, I completely modeled this particular paragraph little by little, doing a lot of think alouds so that they can understand how I put this paragraph together. After I wrote it, then I color coded it so that they could see all the different parts of our tree body paragraph strategy. And then I went ahead and while they were in PE, I wrote the opposing point of view, the opposing claim which is GM foods are not beneficial. And I also did the same thing, a little bit different. So as you can see, this one starts with their transition and their reason, but after they list their reason, which is their topic sentence for that paragraph, they list their evidence. This one starts with elaboration so that they can see that they can do it either way. I also included the transitional phrase list here so that they can refer to it, along with the elaboration pencil strategy as well as the site evidence strategy. And I also added our sources here so that we can refer to them since we are writing the body paragraphs and using evidence to support our reasons. So here's source one, which is food fight. And source two starts here in the, the second half. I just didn't put the page that has the title because it literally just has the title and it finishes there. So I'm hoping that that will help the students, you know, write their paragraphs. They are still working on it. My hope is that they will be done with this particular argumentative essay by Friday. And of course, I'm giving them the beginning of the class to work on it. So after they were done with that essay, we went ahead and read the shared read, A World Without Rules, and did the reciprocal teaching organizer. So that's basically what we ended up doing today. And I wanted to show you one more thing because I finished one of the activities for literacy night, which is tomorrow night. I haven't finished my escape room. <laughs> I'm gonna try to finish it tonight, but I already have my passage. I already know what three skills I want the students to work on. I just have to actually make the activities so that I can print them in color paper and stuff them inside the envelopes. But here is the article that I found in readworks.com, which is a free website for teachers. And it has this really interesting article on the creator of Pokemon. 
So I used the article. I really didn't use these questions, but I went ahead and I created a roll of dice reading comprehension for this article. I added little icons of our favorite starter Pokemons from the beginning. So we have Bulbasaur, Charmander, Squirtle, and Pikachu. Here are the directions. And what students do is they're gonna have these dice. So I'm having this little bag of six of these dice containers that I have put together. These are containers from Dollar Tree. You get 10 containers that are just like this or the square ones for just $1.25 since it's a $1.25 tree. And I also think got the dice at Dollar Tree as well. But basically, I'm only putting a dice in here. They can work in a group. They can roll the die and they can see, oh, five. So I'm gonna go down to five and I can answer any of these questions. I have put them at, down as vocabulary, cause and effect, and general comprehension. And everyone in that group will answer the question, but the person who rolled the die will get to write down their points over here. So they'll write down their points here and as they take their turn. So the only person that gets the point is the person that's rolling the die as long as they answered it correctly, which I'll also include an answer key so that they can use it as well or the teacher that's gonna be monitoring this can also have that. But here is where they would put their points and at the end they can tally up their total. There are two ways that I'm thinking of using this activity. So one is the group, let's say it's a group of four, they're all trying to see who gets the most points, or you can have each group in your class kind of compete against each other and see which group can get, get the most points. And of course, every person still, you know, tallies up their points, but then at the end, everybody in that team will add up their totals for that team. So that's an option. So these are the different questions that I put together for that article. Really enjoy putting this together. Fun activity to do. We'll definitely do something similar with my students at some point or another. So that is the Roll of Dice activity that I wanted to share that it's completely done. And I now need to work on my escape room for my passage on video games, the benefits and the problems with them cause and effect as well so yeah yesterday I was kind of rambling because ugh, it was a long day I was exhausted I also didn't feel well yesterday my blood sugar kind of dropped in the morning as I was coming up the stairs with some heavy heavy bags I had to sit in the middle of the hallway on the floor right before I got my students they saw me down the hallway but I told them no no stay there I saw my teachers help me one of them gave me a piece of Starburst so that my blood sugar can get regulated and um, then the rest of the day was weird. I kept feeling kind of like hot, but my skin was cold at the same time kind of thing. If you know, you know. So it was a weird day. So I was kind of sporadic. Also, my mom was in the room and one of our custodians. So I was like, oh my God, there's people in the room. But anyway, you know how it is. I'm talking to you, but secretly I'm an introvert. So anyway, that's all for today, Tuesday. Tomorrow is literacy night. Uh, literacy you know all sorts of things so I'll let you know how it goes <laughs> and hopefully I have my whole escape room ready to go see you then hello everyone it is the end of the day Wednesday and right before literacy night it is actually like 3 45 right now and I need to get ready in a few short minutes for a virtual doctor appointment that I have at 4 and then relax until the literacy night starts, which starts at 5.30, and the rotations are going to begin at 6.15. So at 6.15, I'll expect the first group of students to come to my classroom. They're gonna have about three rotations of 20 minutes each. And I'm happy to say that last night when I went home, I worked on my escape room and I completed the activities. So let me quickly show you what I came up with. We start with the first activity, which is vocabulary matching. So they have one sheet that has all the definitions of the words, and then they have these words that I already cut out that go on top of that sheet. So, okay, teachable moment here. I just realized that I didn't put the definitions in the order that the words are in so that the students will be able to see popular. So I need to quickly tweak this and make changes, but 
this is the real teacher moment here, real life in making this escape room. But I will, that's a quick fix, and that's just one sheet that I have to print out six times, not a problem, replace it in the envelope, we got this, we still have time. So anyway, the students will put these words on the correct definitions, which right now they're not right, but they will be, and they will be able to see a code word which is popular so that they can move on to the next level. I call that level because they're reading about video games and how they're good and bad. So in this one, they have this one where they will put their cause and effect, and they don't have to put them in any order here, but they have to make sure they match the cause with the effect. And notice that there are words behind. So it says video games can be both good and bad. So once they connect the cause and effect, they will be able to then rearrange them to make the complete sentence for that. And then they have the last one, which is level three, the benefits and the problems, which is a dichotomous key. So basically they're going to decide whether this statement is a benefit or a problem. And whatever it is, they'll circle that word, they'll put in their NERCO sheet, and they will see the last clue to solve this level and complete the game. And then I created these to be the labels of the envelopes. I went ahead and I grabbed different colored envelopes that I have purchased in the past since last school year. And I also laid out my three different activities and I went ahead and I cut them out get them inside of the envelopes and put the label on top of the envelopes. The baskets are all ready to go and I also rearranged the desk so they're more like in a long, like two long rows of clusters. So this is basically what my room is looking like right now. So over here we have the boxes. So as you can see, they have an article, they have pencils, they have level one, level two, level three, and they have the code collection sheet where they're going to, I forgot to show you on the computer, but here is where video games are, and when they do the vocabulary, popular, cause and effect, they will be able to write that sentence there, and then on the back, each numbered statement, they put the letter that goes with that numbered statement so they can see the final clue. So that is the code collection sheet, and the pencils I've had for a while, I got them at for teachers only from the Atlas Pen and Pencil Company. So it says, I love to read. So it's uh, very, very nice and on theme. So that's basically what I have for each group going on. Have a different basket because I didn't have an extra one of these, but it works. So each basket is all ready to go for today's activity and I'm excited. I also quickly worked on Canva to create a title presentation that I can just project on the screen so that when people come in, they know what they're doing in this particular room. So this is the presentation that I created. It's just two slides. I got this theme board off of Canva and of course I just tweaked it and adapted it to my need. And then the next slide is the directions. So I have them here, read the passage, the vortex of video games, grab a code collector sheet, Start with the level one envelope, complete each envelope in order. So that is basically what I've created for tonight's literacy night. And of course, you already know that I also created another game that I already went over and I gave the teacher the dice and the Pokemon stickers. Oh, and I put together the little bookmarks that everyone that participates in my session will get once they finish the escape room. So here are the bookmarks. I just got them on Amazon and I just finished putting all the little ribbons so the students will just choose a bookmark and they're all video game themed so they're really nice and now i want to let you know what we did today so this morning i started with my block one they started with i ready so that they can get their minutes in after that we had a very special event at 10 a.m where we had an author reading us a story that she wrote and illustrated herself and it was amazing basically it brings awareness to our differences because the bat in the story has autism and the author was explaining to us her personal story of being diagnosed with autism herself as an adult and learning about that and 
trying to write a book that she knows will benefit other students that may have gone through the similar experiences as she did. So I really had an amazing time, you know, with the students watching that presentation, which took us all the way up to lunch. And let me go ahead and insert a couple of clips from that presentation that were really impactful. Hello, readers. I'm just super excited to be here with you and share Bitsy Bat School Star. I'm an author and illustrator of books. I love to tell stories with words and pictures, and that is why I became an author and illustrator. I also like to tell stories, but writing was always a lot harder for me. Flowers are the house. Yeah, there's something is wrong with that, right? But writing takes a lot of practice. So eventually I was able to draw pictures and put them to words. And that's what happens in a picture book. That's one thing I love about picture books is the pictures do a lot of the work of telling the stories. And then the, the words also help support the story. And sometimes they tell a different part of the story. I was afraid a lot as a kid. I didn't want to go outside. I didn't want to meet people. I didn't know how to make friends. Um, I didn't even know how that really worked. I felt like I was watching people through a thick pane of glass so they could see me and I could see them, but I couldn't reach them. So I did a lot of observing and a lot of mirroring, like practicing to act like other people so that I would be accepted. And I felt like I always got it wrong though. Something always seemed kind of off and that ended up labeling me as a weirdo. To me, it was like being a bat in a school full of mice. So I leaned into being different. I leaned into being the weirdo. I tried to figure out what kids thought was funny and uh, I tried to make them laugh. And I figured if they were laughing at my jokes, then they would not be laughing at me. I also got more focused on my love of drawing. Uh, drawing and telling stories was a place where I always felt safe and understood. And it was also a safe place for me to talk about my feelings. And so when I was masking and pretending to be like other people, it made me feel like I was a broken star. And I wanted to write a book that would help each child see themselves as special. And I also wanted to help others see a perspective from someone that isn't like them. I thought about those bats and the, my, the bat in the school full of mice how they look similar, but bats and mice are very different in many ways. Um, and they have different needs too. There was only one problem. I had known I was autistic for years after my oldest child was diagnosed and I was doing a lot of research and learning to accept my own differences, but I hadn't told anyone besides my closest family and friends that I was autistic. And if I told that bat story, I would have to tell my story too. And that scared me because my whole life I developed a mask so people wouldn't see my differences or um, how I was uh, not fitting in. But one day I was drawing some bats and I was also talking to one of my art students at the college and my art student is also autistic like me. And we were talking about how that felt to be in school. And I told her my idea about the, the bat in a school full of mice. And she said a book like that would have really helped her when she was a kid. And I realized it would have helped me too. And it would help my kid and it would probably help a lot of other people too. So I had to ask myself this question. And this is a question that you can ask yourself too. Will you write a story that will change your life forever? I was scared to tell people that I was autistic, but I remembered facing another fear of mine, the pool. And I remembered how brave I could be and how learning to swim gave me back my power. And also I remembered that I was not alone, that I had the support of my friends and my family and they were gonna be there for me. So at a school visit, one of the young writers stood up and said, ask me if I was ever afraid when I write my stories. And the answer is, I'm always afraid, but I am afraid and I do it anyway. So you can say this to yourself too, be afraid and do it anyway. Sharing my stories helps other people feel seen and that has been worth me facing my fears. 
There are treasures hiding in the dark places of your fears. So I encourage you to lean into what makes you afraid. See what's behind it. There are treasures, treasures to be found in the dark places of your fears. What feels really vulnerable? Tell those stories. Facing your fears is some of the greatest work you can do for yourself and the greatest gift you can give the world. So I was brave and I wrote that story. And, it, and I turned all these characters who were mice into all sorts of nocturnal animals. And I illustrated the book because I still like drawing best. So we're gonna go ahead and read the story. And then after we read the story, we are going to draw a picture of Bitsy. All right, let me get the story up onto the screen. All right, Bitsy Bat School Star. As you saw, the presentation ended with the students drawing a little bat of the main character, Bitsy the Bat. And I actually, while they were at lunch, I saw some of the drawings that they created and I decided to take a couple of clips so I can show you what they were able to create. And I have to say, they're very talented because Bitsy the Bat came out super cute and I love the different ways that the students were drawing her. And the website that she gave us, BitsyBat.com, has even more resources for teachers who want to read the story, including a step-by-step -step drawing guide that I also printed out for the students. And here is what that looks like. So after that, we went to lunch and after lunch, the students went or I took some of the students that had paid for a reading buddy, which is a stuffed animal. And mine happens to be a blue unicorn. I'll show it to you later because I'm about to start my appointment. And yeah, some of the students got their cute stuffed animals and they had so much fun creating them and they absolutely look cute. It's basically like a Build-A-Bear. We did it last year. The person just brings that machine that stuffs the animals. The kids get the animals and they can choose an outfit for them and they can choose how hard or soft they want their stuffed animal to be along with a little heart to put inside my unicorn or alicorn because there's a unicorn with wings has a little heart that says courage and i also have two from last year that i really love one i thought was a cat but looks more like a bear but i put a wizard outfit on him a blue wizard outfit with gold stars and the other one was a cute pink pig that i put a fairy custom along with butterfly wings it's so adorable and then my afternoon group, which is my ELL students, they were doing the same thing, working on their Imagine Learning and iReady Minutes. And then we continued working on our shared read, A World Without Rules, and going into the visualizing part of our reciprocal reading organizer. And we'll continue that tomorrow. So let me go to this appointment now, and I'll let you know how Literacy Night goes. Here are some clips from Literacy Night. I am very happy to say that the parents and the students were absolutely engaged and really loved the activity. I had a lot of positive feedback from both students and parents and I'm really, really grateful. I wasn't able to give you an update because I was super tired and I left as soon as we finished Literacy Night. One more thing I wanted to show you in this video was my reading buddy that I did make this day, Wednesday. It has wings, it has a horn like a unicorn. One of my students told me it was an alicorn and this is the little dress that I got for it. So that's my reading buddy. And that's what we ended up doing today, Wednesday. Hello everyone, it is the end of the day, Thursday, and what you see before you is a very, very tired teacher. Oh boy, I am so exhausted and I know it's because I've been pulling long lights here and it doesn't help that it's now 6.20 and I need to get going. I was working on a novel study revision for the report card by Andrew Clements and I'm not done. I need to come up with some um, text-based questions using our standards. So I'm going to be working on that tonight and I'll turn it in tomorrow to the district. I am going to get going now because I am freezing here in my very cold AC classroom and I haven't even put on my jacket and I have it right here. Um, but what did we do today? I started with my block two, which is my ELL students. They were working on making sure they finished all their minutes and then we kept on working on the reciprocal teaching organizer on the 
world without rules or a world without rules, which is our shared read. So again, this is how it looks like. This is where we left off. And they also had drawn their quick picture yesterday. So we were working on this question. And to help them with it, we first took it to brainstorming and doing a graphic organizer on the board. So this is the bubble map that we created on what would happen or what are the problems according to the text that would happen in a world without rules. So we went ahead and added it and what's over here is just no police officers. So it's fine if it's covering it right now, but that helped them then answer the question. Of course, I kept it up for my block one, which I ended the day with. I had them know how to start the question by restating or their answer, I should say, how to start their answer by restating the question. And then they're gonna be working on the summary, which starts with the main idea, followed by some very important relevant details. Then we had to stop because we had a special guest speaker. It's been literacy week all week. So the guest speaker was talking to us about a book that she was gonna read an excerpt from for, about Jackie Robinson. So she was here and we combined both classes to be in my classroom and it was a great experience for the kids. The kids loved it. We went to lunch and then after lunch, we had another amazing guest speaker who told us a little bit about her, read a book, and it was, again, another amazing opportunity for the kids. Yes, that means that took up some of our instructional time, but it was worth it for the discussions and the questions that the students were engaging with with each author speaker. And then we went into making sure my block one this afternoon were finishing their I Ready Minutes and to working on their essay and, of course, working on this same organizer that I just showed you. So that's it for today. I'm going to go have to do two errands before I get home along with figuring out what I'm going to eat. So I will see you tomorrow to wrap up the week. Hello, everyone. We have made it to the end of the week. It is Friday, way past the end of the day. I decided to stay late because I wanted to grade all the work from this week and make sure I had at least one grade per subject in my grade book. So I, yeah, stayed late. I didn't finish doing my lesson plans, so I'm just gonna do them at home, which I usually don't do. And the truth is I was using my planning time this week to plan for the activities that we were gonna do for literacy night and also do some other things that I needed to take care of. So I wasn't able to dedicate my time to planning, but now that I have graded the work, I have an idea of what I want to focus on next week. Also Monday and Tuesday, most of the class time is going to be I ready diagnostic. So that's going to be dedicated to that. And then the rest of the class time we'll work on some other activities with the current unit so we can get progressing along because we need to finish that unit next week. Um, and then, yeah, it's just been a day. But after school, after my contract hours, I kept working on the novel study that I am revising for the district um, Department of Advanced Academics and I finished it. So I want to show that to you. This morning I started with my block one and they were working on finishing their argumentative essay on GM foods. I told them that's it. I'm going to give you class time today to get it done, to work on it. I even made different examples of introductions and conclusions as they were working and then I shared that with them. So I'll give you a glimpse of that as well. I ended up writing 10 different introductions, 10 different conclusions, five for each side of the claim. So I did that, and then with my block two, they were working on building more background knowledge by watching the videos from the PowerPoint that the district gives us from the bilingual department. And then they worked on finishing their reciprocal teaching organizer, which I graded. And they also worked on matching the vocabulary words to their meanings. So that's what we were working on. Before they did that in paper, the vocabulary matching, they did an activity through WordWall. Again, our district creates that for us, so I just have a link on the PowerPoint, and the kids were able to just drag and match the word to the definition. So that's what we ended up doing. Another thing that I forgot to mention from yesterday's reading guests that came to read to us, the author of the book that she read to us yesterday, The Lumberjack, also gave us posters of a poem from another character in another one of her books. This is the poster right here of that poem, and we have a few, so we're going to 
raffle it off to the students so that each student in each class has an opportunity to get one of these. Okay, so now let me show you the novel study. And this is just gonna be a quick glimpse at it. So I just typed it in Word as they asked with an Arial font. And it goes over the background, the essential questions, focus questions, initial activities. It keeps going with initial activities on the back with some matchbook summary activities, the question cards that I made. That's what I was working on mostly today. Uh, the paired texts that go along. These are informational texts to go along with the novel. I even have the shared inquiry discussion so that the teacher knows how to do it and an argumentative essay. Before I used to say opinion, so I revised it so it could be argumentative. And of course, the one pager as an option for a culminating activity with an example, the reflection, and all of the standards are Florida Best Standards and the Gifted Standards as well. I also included, like I mentioned, the question cards and I separated them based on domain and the standards that go under that domain for questions to use for the novel and here's the one for reading across genres and then after that here's the annotations sheet as an option so I have this as an option and the other option is this one that looks more like little sticky notes this is just another option to do chapter summaries but that is pretty much the novel study that I put together for the district. I also wanted to share these with you because I realized that in my video from last year, I talked about an idioms parade that I totally, you know, messed up with my remembering to do total like teacher brain, like faulty teacher brain moment. But these are the little idiom posters, mini posters that I created for the students. So there's a whole set of these. I have not put these in my TPT store, but if there's a need for them or you would like a copy of them, I might just end up packaging them and putting them on TPT. So let me know. Basically, I just wrote the idiom and the actual meaning of it. And my students last year would create the literal meaning of it. And these ants are here because I created them for one of the students so they can just put ants all over the pants for ants in my pants or on my pants so yes and here are the examples for the introductions for gm foods argumentative essay so i have five different types of introduction examples as you can see the left is that gm foods are beneficial the right is that they're not and then these are the conclusion examples for those different claim sides so again, I have five for one and five for the other, so students can see some examples and revise their conclusions as needed or maybe get inspiration to write their own. So that is a wrap for this week, week 21. And I also gave the students the scoring rubric so that they can go and score themselves. I stapled it to their papers when I collected them so that when I read their papers and score their papers, I actually circle the score that I would give them and then they'll get those papers back next week so they can see my feedback and I will give them an opportunity to revise those essays. So that's it my friends. That's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought and any questions you may have. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I hope you have a beautiful magical day and don't forget to smile. Hello dreamers, wishers, and magical thinkers. Thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking on my picture down here. You can also check out my latest videos here and here. Don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.